Welcome, everybody. Like in chapter three of the Blanchard textbook, it is the case that the investment function uh, is modeled very, very simplistic. So we are assuming that investment is exogenous. Investment does not depend on the interest rate. And in the numerical example, we assumed that investment is equal to 150. Uh, why is the investment function model so simplistic? So why is it not the case that the investment function depends on the interest rate? The reason is that in chapter three, we don't know what the interest rate is. Like the interest rate is introduced in chapter four, uh, where we uh, talk about the money and the financial markets. And we are looking at the relationship between money demand and money supply. And the interest rate becomes an endogenous variable in this framework. As we said, uh, in the intersection of the money supply and the money demand curve, we find the equilibrium interest rate. Uh, for example, here, the equilibrium interest rate is equal to 10%. And when the central bank performs a contractionary monetary policy so that money supply decreases, the interest rate increases. Now that we know these relationships, we can, in Chapter 5, model uh, the investment function a little bit more realistic. And um, we will assume that investment depends on the interest rate uh, and in a negative way. So when the central bank increases the interest rate, investment will be lower. And when the central bank decreases the interest rate, then investment will be higher. So let's have a look at this uh, chapter five, the ISLM model. And uh, here you can see uh, the usual relationship with respect to the consumption function. Consumption depends on one autonomous component and um, uh, consum consumption also depends on disposable income and the marginal propensity to consume. Uh, furthermore, goods demand on the right-hand side also depends on government spending. But now the investment function is modeled uh, much, much richer than before. It is the case that this blue part here represents now the investment function. It depends on one autonomous component, uh, B0. Then we have also that the investment function depends on GDP and the investment function depends negatively on the interest rate negatively because there is a minus sign in front of the B2 parameter. Uh, we are assuming that the central bank sets the interest rate. So the central bank performs a monetary policy so that in the end, the central bank reaches this kind of interest rate. So when we substitute equation 25 into equation 24, then it is the case that investment now depends on the interest rate, which is like set by the central bank. Uh, once more, uh, it is important that you understand the different letters in this equation. Uh, we have the following parameter, like C1 is the marginal propensity to consume. B2, this is the income responsiveness of investment. And B1 tells you by how much investment will increase in case that GDP increases by one unit. B2 is called the interest rate responsiveness of investment, and it indicates by how much investment will decrease in case that the interest rate increases by one unit. Uh, when we look at this um, model, it is the case that in our version right now, we only have like one equation and therefore we can solve for one endogenous variable, which is once more like the domestic GDP level, uh, the Y variable. The exogenous variables are like the autonomous component of consumption, C0, the autonomous component of investment, B0, uh, the interest rate is exogenous. It was or it is set by the central bank. And then also taxes and government expenditure, like these are exogenous variables. Once more, 
uh, this uh, distinction between parameters, endogenous variables, and exogenous variables is very important. It is very important because the shock always occurs at one exogenous variable. So one exogenous variable changes, and we want to find out how does uh, the endogenous variable react? How does GDP react in case that one exogenous variable changes? The parameters are assumed to be constant. What is very important in all macroeconomic models that you understand when does an equilibrium curve shift. An equilibrium curve shifts in case that one variable changes, which is included in the equilibrium condition, but not displayed on one of the two axes. So therefore, like it is very important that you know the equilibrium conditions, like what kind of variables are included. And it's also important that you know in what kind of diagram are we going to work afterwards. So let's have a look at the diagram first. We are going to work in the ISLM di diagram, in one diagram where we have the interest rate on the vertical axis and the GDP level is on the horizontal axis. The IS curve seems to be downward sloping and like the LM curve in this model is like a, vert is a horizontal line. So when we apply this kind of definition uh, to the IS and the LM relationship, then the ILM, LM curve will shift down in case that like the interest rate decreases, in case that the central bank decreases the interest rate, and the IS curve shifts to the right, in case that the autonomous component of consumption increases, in case that the autonomous component of uh, investment increases, in case that taxes decrease, or in case that the government increases government spending. More or less, it is a case that the IS curve will shift like to the right in case that one variable changes which affects like good demand in a positive way. So this is the initial equilibrium. Uh, we can now like determine this level of GDP and we want to analyze what happens if a negative shock occurs. For example, uh, consumer confidence breaks down and therefore the consumers are reluctant to consume and the autonomous component of consumption will decrease. Let's uh, finish uh, this kind of analysis in this diagram. Like we know that the IS curve will shift to the left. It's a negative goods demand shock and we get a new equilibrium in point B. So also here, the economy ends up in a recession. Um, there is the recession, unemployment rate, rates are higher than before, unemployment rate increased. So what can the government do about it? The government can do, for example, an expansionary fiscal policy. But here in this diagram, we will assume that the central bank tries to react and the central bank tries to lower the interest rate. The central bank is trying to implement like an expansionary monetary policy. And uh, given the size of the shock, uh, it is uh, possible for the central bank to lower the interest rate in a way that in the end, the problem is cured, like the right amount of medicine was used in order to cure the problem in order to cure the disease and in the end GDP is on the same level in C compared to the level A. So once more in a first step a negative uh, goods demand shock hit the economy and like the uh, IS curve shifted to the left the economy ends up in a recession and then the, uh, the central bank tries to use the right amount of medicine the right amount of the dose of the medicine so that the problem can be cured and GDP is on the same level as before. Let's check whether this is always possible. 
Once more, um, this is the initial equilibrium. A negative shock occurs, but now the shock is very huge. We are shifting the IS curve very much to the left, and the central bank is lowering the interest rate very much to the level of zero. But still, uh, the GDP level in C is not on the previous level of YA. YC is smaller than YA, and therefore, like the economy, is in a recession. There is no munition left. The central bank cannot lower the interest rate uh, into the negative range. There is a so-called zero lower bound of the interest rate, and there is no munition left for the central bank. The central bank cannot do any better than lowering the interest rate to the level IC, uh, which is like equal to uh, the level of zero. How can this uh, um, kind of problem occur? The problem can occur in case that there is a big negative demand shock. The problem which uh, the central bank has now is called like liquidity trap. Like the central bank is trapped because the so-called zero lower bound becomes binding. The solution could be that now the government should use an expansionary fiscal policy. The government should increase government spending or the government should decrease the taxes. So we could shift like the IS curve back to the right, back to the right in order to boost GDP. But in Greece, this was not possible. In the Greek uh, crisis, the IMF, uh, the ECB, and like the Euro Commission said, like you have to implement a contractionary policy. You have to cut back government expenditure and you have to increase taxes. And then, of course, you can imagine what happens when the wrong fiscal policy is implemented, then the IS curve will shift further, like to the left, and the problem with respect to GDP will even be larger. So the Greek economy is unable to get out of recession because of the fact that the central bank has no munition left. The ECB lowered the interest rate to the level of zero, but then uh, fiscal policy cannot support and cannot give this positive stimulus because the government budget of Greek is already in red ink and uh, Greek has a government budget deficit already in the beginning and therefore like it was prescribed a contractionary fiscal policy which led to a very severe recession in Greece. So it becomes clear that like with this ISLM model, we can already explain like uh, very actual topics um, in macroeconomic policy uh, related like to the euro area. Thank you very much for watching this short video. Have a nice day and bye bye.